also very impactful and hope no hope of death yeah this uh, this is so mm -hmm. and Prasiva has written a lot about melancholy she's innovativeized and kind of stated points in literature as well as art and she's reading those elements in many artists and she also looks at how melancholy is not a medical issue mm -hmm. you know and which is for the first time in the history there's a different um, different understanding of this area so yeah uh, no hope of death comes from some of her writing where um, the melancholic subject doesn't even hope for death you know uh, hope of death is suicidal melancholic is a person who goes on you know there's that element of suicidal is not there you know it's an element of repetition and just I mean suicide is a perhaps next stage but it's not the stage of the melancholic you know and it has this relationship with hope and lack of hope you know it's an in-between style uh, Julia Kostreva's uh, writings constructed on this uh, um, evolution of the self or how the self uh, comes to be mm -hmm. uh, through the placenta of the mother mm -hmm. the, the food she takes and mm -hmm. uh, then the child in, is being created in the fetus mm -hmm. and then that kind of identity mm -hmm. of the artist and then its transformation um, but uh, I haven't read the other things which you mm -hmm. were saying mm -hmm. She's written a very beautiful work on uh, Holobine's Dead Christ mm -hmm. and that's something I think all painters need to refer to mm -hmm. because she's reading the imagery to understand uh, Holobine, uh, Holobine's time but also the situation of that image, the position of Christ and his, um, his body, mm -hmm. his hands so it's a very beautiful analysis of all of this in relation to Holobine. Yeah. I think this particular reference comes from that particular writing. I'm not I don't remember exactly. I've not collected the footnote here. But yeah, I mean I've read a couple of her writings. One of those, yeah. When you say shelter uh, for the itinerant mm -hmm. and uh, also at the same time you uh, in a way dissect the body and make the bed so um, what about these two contradictions? Um, um, perhaps the shelter for the itinerant is also about shelter for craft you know I'm um, uh, in a way not dislocating the body from the craft you know they're not two separate entities in a way in another work that I sent to KNM which I was simultaneously doing with these works I've uh, used tools the uh, craftsman's tools like scissors and hammers and things like that I've embedded them within within a body surface and I kind of speak about the fact that um, the tools are like prosthetics that are desires that are embodied within us you know the, all the desires that we have within us are actually brought out as prosthetics and tools you know so uh, I've literally placed these tools within the body then you know to re reinstate the fact that craft is not devoid of the body ever you know it's very much a part of the body and thus it gets manifested outside and shelter in that sense of the body is not a shelter that is not of craft you know it's very much for the craftsman as well and um, yeah so it, all those nails that are hanging within it they are very much part of the shelter you know and uh, <coughs> the dissected body mm -hmm. and representation of the dissected form through some of the things like uh, threads and 
you know, reels and things like that and then cloth in itself and I've kind of tried to show that aspect also. So they're two different, so to say, ideas in a way. Mm -hmm. But the relationship is similar, you know, that the body shelters craft and the house shelters the body, you know. In yeah. fact, I have seen your first solo at uh, the Birla Academy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, not just uh, rest of the galleries yeah. in the Mumbai and uh, yeah. uh, Shirin had given a note about okay. and uh, mm, it was uh, very impactful and I remember small works which were displayed free of frames on the wall. Mm -hmm. It has references to languages, yeah. geography. Yeah, I know, I mean uh, I was, I realized that there is like a kind of a thread that I pulled from earlier works also and perhaps I, I didn't have to do it deliberately you know mm -hmm. like these uh, these understandings have been there at some point and um, I'm more clear in that sense mm -hmm. you know which I wasn't perhaps six seven years ago mm -hmm. yeah yeah all those needles were very much within the fabric and um, I was using more simpler objects perhaps. Even I remember the the framed work which which uh, held a transparent silence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I yeah, have that yeah, image with yeah. me yeah. and uh, silence yeah. where uh, both you can see yeah, both the sides and yeah. Yeah. the whole void. Uh, the silence yeah. was like suspended within the yeah, void. Yeah, yeah. So it's so full yeah. actually. Yeah, uh, that work is sitting with me. <laughs> It's it got back, it returned back. I mean, from that show, very few things came back, and that's one of the things that's. It's called sound. Sound, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was. Uh, uh, the work was titled as uh, Looking at Silence or something like that, yeah. Yeah. Like the um, uh, very honest references mm -hmm. from, from the ongoing thought processes mm. and uh, imaginations mm. of uh, ideologies mm. and performances which are in the contemporary scene. Mm. Would, would you like to say a few things about like mm. your initial like use of velvet and mm. Mm. and also like uh, that mm. I was remembering how the shadow looks like wax mm. spreading mm. love mm. like what uh, is a very poignant work by Anita Dubey love yeah. where candles yeah. 